The federal government passed some credits for uh, renewable energy. I think it was $10,000 or up to 50% of a project. Uh, the, the residents of Wyoming snapped them all up uh, within 10 days. We're not stupid. <laughs> it's one of the things that I think we're doing wrong is, is we're not concentrating enough on the, both the financial and practical benefits of energy efficiency to the extent people can see that and that it works in their daily budget or in their, year, or in their monthly bill. Um, energy conservation is one of those things that, that uh, people, people do understand price signals. Um, and uh, so that's why I think we need to be very careful about uh, understanding that energy efficiency is kind of the, it's not just the low hanging fruit, but it's the permanent fruit. When you, when you make those gains, you make them. What I was going to ask is whether, how you think that this energy and uh, environment issues will play out in 2010. Well, the public is going to be more and more skeptical about our ability to have policy in this area. Um, you're in an economy in which um, 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 people are going to tend to view environmental gains as luxuries, not as necessities. They're going to view their job, their kids, those things as... Public the, polls show that already. Yeah. Right. I mean, because, yeah. I mean, it's, it's sort of Maslow's hierarchy of values. I mean, that's where we're at. And I think you're going to see that sort out because we have not made a compelling case that um, um, there is a, a, a doable um, sort of glide path to make the uh, energy and environment issues um, work together. So you think, do you think legislation will get through this year? No. No. Do you I think mean, it gets through in President Obama's term, current um, term? Uh, you know, I'm, I'm one of those people who thinks what they ought to do is back up, pick out two or three things, and go do them. Um, so the, pick out a renewable electricity standard or, or well, a, a clean some, energy standard. Clean energy standard. Uh, with, a, with a reasonable glide path. Do that, it a la carte rather than all right. one big bundle. Like if you look at the Waxman-Markey uh, bill, it has sort of five pages from everybody. Um, and so at the end of it, you have all of those pages, and I've read the whole thing, and I've tried to figure it out, and the whole thing is, I think they meant well, but by the time they took in five pages from every member of Congress, uh, you ended up with a bill that makes no sense and is actually internally inconsistent in terms of the policies that it tries to promote. If, if we're serious about both energy security and um, uh, managing uh, climate uh, gases, um, I would set a standard initially as probably something close to the sort of natural gas standard and say anybody can hit that or below. Uh, the it's emission number. Emissions, yeah. right, the emission number, which means coal's going to have to control 65, 67 percent of its CO2 emissions if it's going to, if you're going to build new plants, which I think they can do, and if they can't, they can't. Um, I would say that, that I would be, um, I would insert in that bill a fairly serious effort to actually think about how we're going to restructure the electric grid because none of this works, and, and in fact, this economy is not going to continue to grow if we don't figure out what we're going to do with the electric grid. And, I would, and I, would, I would create as much incentive for the guy who can figure out how to reduce line loss by having a more efficient uh, means of transmitting electricity. We ought to reward him every bit as much as we're going to reward the person who figures out how to use coal or natural gas or some turbine, because at the end of the day, you get to the same result 